from your local news leader, Karina Rubio, Matthew White, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. You're watching The Morning Show at 9 on WCIA 3. As always, we thank you for staying with us on The Morning Show. Today, we're going to focus on yet another scientific explanation that happens around the world. So joining us this morning to help us out with that is wise guy Paul Clea. Thanks so much for being here, Paul. So you have a little demonstration to help us envision nuclear fusion a little yeah, better. Yeah, so there was uh, this big event that happened about a month ago on December 5th that people, scientists, have been working toward for over 50 years trying to get this uh, achievement of ignition in nuclear fusion. So what is fusion? It's taking two uh, nuclei, like two, two protons, and being able to push them together so that they become one heavier particle. Sort of heavier, actually. <laughs> uh, we'll see that in fact it's actually lighter than the two of them when they're when they're separated. So uh, that happened uh, at Los Alamos National Laboratory at the National Ignition Facility. Uh, can can we just call it the first graphic here? Okay. So that was uh, just a picture of of the whole thing. Let's actually go to the second graphic then. Great. So uh, this thing that they achieved was they were able to get more energy out then they put in, which is what you want eventually if you want a power source. And I'll, I'll talk about the sort of there uh, at the very end. Uh, okay, next next thing. So what is what did they do? So they took uh, nuclei, uh, so they have deuterium. Deuterium is like heavy hydrogen, so you put on an extra neutron. And tritium is like hydrogen, but you put two neutrons on. And if you can push those together close enough, then they will fuse together. And what they will give you then is one uh, helium nucleus, which is two protons and two neutrons also called an alpha particle, and then an extra neutron. So you notice at the beginning, we start out with two protons and three neutrons, and at the end, we start out, we end up with two protons and also three neutrons, okay? So it seems like, well, why does that actually buy you anything? Why, why does it help? <laughs> and it helps because of uh, Einstein, and I'm sure you've heard of E equals MC squared, so yes, there's sir. an equivalence between mass and energy. And so we could, and if we can end up with something where uh, the final mass is less than the initial mass, then that means that in some sense, it's like we've gone from something that has a higher potential energy to a lower potential energy, and we gain kinetic energy out of that. And so that's the goal. We want, that's the thing we're trying to do when we fuse these together. And if we go, now I'll do that exciting demo one more time. So we start out with, with a higher mass, and we end up with a lower mass, and that <laughs> allows us to get this conversion, conversion into energy. It's okay, we don't need it. Okay, so going back to the, to the next slide, so, um, okay, so we could t say how heavy is the deuterium nu nucleus and in these weird units of U, which is one twelfth of a carbon-12 atom, it's 2.014, and how heavy is the tritium? It's three, so basically protons and neutrons weigh about the same, uh, to, and so that, that we get this total mass, initial mass, 5.03, and you could then look at what the helium uh, has and what the neutron has, and you add those together and you get 5.01. And you notice that 5.01 is less than 5.03, and the why is it lighter? It's lighter because the things are bound together. They want to stick together when they can fuse together, and then that difference gives energy. So if we go to the next slide. Um, so the total energy that we get out is just the difference between those two masses times c squared, and that ends up being about three picojoules, uh, wow. three times 10 to the minus 12 joules per per fusion event, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if we compare it to what happens if you take, say, methane and you burn a molecule of methane, how much energy gets released there, it's oh, a million times less. And so that's the thing. The nuclear energy is going to be a million times more than this typical sort of chemical energy that we get. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like that's great. Uh, just works. We just put the things together, but there's a big problem. And the problem is that these are positively charged. They're both positively charged, and you might have learned a long time ago that uh, you know like charges repel, and they repel more and more as you push them together. In fact, the force goes like one over the square of the distance between them. So that means that as you push them closer and closer, you need more and more energy to get them to come close to each other. So if we go to the next little slide here. Um, so four squared like one over r squared, and so we can think about the energy as getting to push them together. You need more and more energy. It turns out if you can get them to actually touch, so that they're within the, the radius of uh, the diameter of a nucleus, then in fact this other force takes over the strong nuclear force, and then they want to stay together. So the energy drops a lot. So the question is, how do you get them? that close to each other because it turns out it needs a lot of energy to do that and so what they have to do is they have to get them moving very fast 
Okay, so we can uh, come back to me for a second. So they have uh, a bunch of lasers and they're going to shine these lasers on this gas of these things. In fact, they're going to shine them on a little fuel cell that's about the size about the size oh, of this wow. peppercorn that I have. <laughs> yeah, so very small. Very and they're going to shine lasers from all directions that are going to heat this up and they're going to cause it to implode. Okay, so my last little uh, slide, science-y slide here. <laughs> so they take out, they start out with a one nanojoule, so a billionth of a joule laser pulse, and they, it, they amplify it a million billion times, so 10 to the 15 times, and they put all that energy in the outside. That causes this to implode, and the density goes up by a factor of a thousand, so that it's a hundred times denser than lead. So then I've got all these uh, deuterium and, and, and tritium uh, nuclei are close to each other, they fuse together, and then they release energy. So the energy that they put in in the lasers was about two megajoules in this pulse, and the power that they got out was a little over three megajoules. So they actually got out more, uh, a factor of one and a half gain, it's called the, the ignition. So that was something that scientists have been trying to do for, oh, like I say, over 50 years. It's quite difficult to do. Um, and in fact, I'll talk next time about why I just, what I, what I just said should be impossible, mm -hmm. but it worked anyway. <laughs> Let me just, last thing. So we're not going to have nuclear fusion as a power source anytime soon, because although they had three megajoules of laser power, the power that they needed from the wall to get that was more like 300 megajoules or 400 megajoules. So the actual efficiency was much less than a percent, not, not one and a half. Those were lasers that were designed 20 years ago because uh, they've been working on this a long time at the National Ignition Facility. And so you can get more efficient lasers, you can make more efficient processes. So now there's just a lot of engineering that has to happen uh, to try and push that along. But that may eventually, hopefully, will be our power that we use you know, 20, 30 years from now uh, that will power everything instead of uh, you know, using natural gas or coal or even solar or something like that. All right, Paul, thanks so much. We're looking forward to expanding on this next time you're in. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right. Well